proper plank. How's it going everyone? Welcome to the weekly old school developer Q&A. 
Uh, this week we are missing a couple of people, as you might notice. Ash and John have apparently caught all of the diseases and they've been coughing <laughs> and sneezing and sni sniffling all day. So John's over there, Ash is upstairs. They're not going to be joining us today. Instead, we've got Mod Jack Mob. Hello. Mod Matt K. Hey! Let's think about that. Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> Jack Mob threw me off. Uh, Mod Reach. And Jack, I'm Mod Jack Mob threw you off what? You throw me off. <laughs> Stop. Oh. Okay. Reorganize the bowl. To the qu <laughs> back. To the questions. <laughs> okay. Start with the right. You don't even know what side you're starting on. Okay. You're feeling all right. You're not getting poorly <laughs> as well. I think you might be coming down with it. From Chris Archie RS, will there be old school merchandise at RuneFest? Yes. Yes, there will. With old school stuff on it, like that. Yeah, that, that thing there, um, and you can buy it and everything with crystal coins. There you go. Pignus <laughs> asks, are you planning that Abbey Demon boss to come out that you mentioned a few months ago? Uh, we're not going to let it go to waste. Our new artist has already drawn some concept art. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. uh, he's actually coloured it in and you've seen it. I haven't. Yes. I've seen parts of it on the screens, but I haven't actually seen it. Awesome. It looks good. So um, we're not going to let it go to waste. I also don't want to let the Abyssal Dagger that uh, Alfie drew go to waste. Absolutely. So, yes, at some point in the future. Hugo Plucks 13. If it were to be a priority to the community, could you create a system that allows you to refund items in the future? Well, uh, I spoke to Phil about that um, the other day. It involves us getting something called a uh, profile editor, which allows us to edit your profile so we can do anything we like with them. Um, give you know, Pure's level two defense, that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, it's, it's not a small thing by any means, so uh, maybe one day, but I, I wouldn't hold your breath if I were you. There's also the manpower to monitor that and also mm. go through it and actually make changes. That would be down to the support team. But um, Who is Snake? Just look Skills at the chat. Is it? He's a rat now. Oh, he's a rat now, apparently. Is he? Oh, okay. Be rat raid. raid. <laughs> yes, there we go. Oh yeah, cheers. Skill specs are. for the raid then. Skill specs, well done. Congratulations. Stop dying. Yeah. On, on the demotion. <laughs> <laughs> Snake to rat. <laughs> Uh, Rum353 asks, will we see a poll on summoning in the near future, or even just a certain familiar, a certain familiars implemented by different means? I don't think we'll see a poll on summoning. We did talk about the new skill, didn't we? And uh, uh, yeah. so you guys voted fourth, wasn't it? The fourth most important update to you was uh, the new skill. Uh, we looked at summoning and we thought we just can't do that justice with what we've got. Um, so we probably won't be looking at that one. Uh, but we can. I mean, we do like the idea of familiars, pets that do something useful, so we'll probably do something with it at some point. But what, when, how it works, that's uh, all up for debate and uh, stuff. But again, up to you guys what you want at the end of the day. I think generally summoning from the community, judging by the chat, mm. every time it comes up on stream is a pretty... Yeah, it's a it, was, no. <laughs> it was a significant yeah. game changer, and I don't think our game is ready for that yet, yeah. at least that level of change. I think uh, our, our biggest one we were talking about, it, our biggest sort of concern was uh, the summoning affects the combat level, and that's something that you guys have been very precious about, is maintaining that combat stays as what it was. Um, and I think summoning would upset that quite a lot. But, I mean, the idea of, I mean, we went down the necromancy route as well, didn't we? The idea of killing a monster, getting bones, and then resurrecting something out of those bones is, is quite a fantastic idea. It's something we'd love to use in some way or other. Prayer update, maybe, tie it into... It's almost like summoning in that respect so that these monsters can do different things, but it's all, all stuff we can think about and play with in the future. Seeds Range asks, could we buy the ability to insure untradeables with bounty hunter points from the store? Hmm. It's not impossible. Um, we can definitely do something like that. Again, that would just depend on whether people actually figured they want that, I guess. If you insure your untradeable, okay, you pet spend, I don't know, 10k to insure your cape. Does that 10k then drop instead of the cape and you keep your cape, maybe? I was trying to think, if you're killing somebody dressed in untradeables, uh, you kill them, they die, you get nothing from it because you've insured all yeah. your kit, which is the concern. So maybe what you insure it with is, is, dropped, to the is dropped to the player, so yeah, they actually fair. get something from doing it that way. That would be fair. You still get nothing from killing them if you're below 20 wounds. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. Generally what I've seen is people don't like the fact that people can pick up their untradeables in PvP. Generally mm. something that at least PKers aren't fans of because it means that they get a lot less loot, essentially. If someone goes in with fighter hat, torso, rune defender, uh, you're looking at getting 
half what you would if mm. they were actually risking those things. So, uh, Absolutely. But also, if, if people are insuring it, it will make better returns for them, wouldn't it, across the board? Yeah, generally. Yeah, so that's quite good. I like that idea. Who was that anyway that said to ask that? Uh, that was Seeds Range. Yeah, good. Nice one. Saib asks, can we have the ability to convert Staff of the Dead into Staff of Light or Staff of Balance to autocast Sour Strike or Claws of Gothics? I thought Staff of the Dead was supposed to be the uh, replacement for the Staff of Light. <laughs> yeah, um, but they're, they're suggesting because it can autocast Sammy Flames. Ah, I see. Okay, I see mm. what you're getting at. Um, alternate versions, we can do. There's no reason, really, why not. I think John's nodding. You can think of anything to make it drop it. Oops. We've got spaces. Yeah, it, we can do. There's yeah. nothing, nothing stopping us from making that possible. All load new Slayer bosses along the way. Rat boss. Rat, Rat boss, boss. Yeah. <laughs> Graceful RS asks, what will the drop rate of the Dark Core pet be from Corporal Beast? If we, <laughs> if we assume we're doing one, and that's yeah. exactly what people want, then we will likely make it in the, s in the range of what other pets are, probably a bit more common, because killing Corp is quite difficult. That's the way we've usually adopted things if the NPC is very, very difficult to kill, like the Cowpack Queen, for example. The drop rate is slightly increased, but... Um, It'll be four figures. Four figures, I think we're, we're probably settled on. I mean, one in 2,000 at minimum, I guess, which mm. would make it the most common pet, I believe. It'd still be rarer Second. than a Sigil, wouldn't it? Um, no. Would it not? One in... Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah likely, yeah, so... We'll have, we have to work that out. I mean, it's, it comes down to whether or not you actually want a corp pet or a corp pet or any pet at all, really. But we'll have to see. John will do the balancing on that when <laughs> we actually come to develop corp yeah. and finish corp off. Kind of unfortunate that John's not here for this question, but Cams asks, have you had much discussion on the idea for a high-level solo boss? Uh, yes. <laughs> John, John's over there, but we did have an offsite the other day where mm. we discussed our priorities for the coming year and what we're going to focus on, who's going to focus on what, and what our approach is going to mm. be to make sure we're developing as fluently as we can and we're all communicating pro appropriately to make sure none of us are left behind and none of us confused by anything. And uh, one of the offsite topics was a solo boss because that was the third most popular, yes, third yeah, most yeah. popular thing on the priority poll. And we did sit down and we did discuss what we want our solo boss to be and John's adamant it's going to be a snake, for example. And Actually, it was just it was starting <laughs> to joke, but it's yeah. a nice concept. Yeah, yes. so we've sat down, I've thrown some ideas that I've had on the table, everybody else has contributed some ideas, we've worked out what we like it to be, and that's just the early sorry, concept of it. That's subject to change depending on what's possible and mm. what we have time for, at least. But we have thought sort of quite extensively about what we want a solo boss to be and uh, John's going to be sorting that project out so yeah 101 different mechanics didn't we everything from yeah. spitting acid to uh breaking to bridges. poisoning that grows breaking bridges yeah swimming underwater and all sorts of things tears of graphics so. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, well. yeah next year we'll be so looking at uh, putting that out at some point i think John's going to be heading up that project and Ashley's going to be developing it mm. all groovy when will we see a follow-up on Priority Poll 3? It would be nice to know what to expect for the next few months on Old School. You're the comms man. Yeah, when, when, when can we tell that? I'd, uh, I'm doing the last bit of work for it today, actually. The uh, scheduling, sort of rescheduling a few bits, so we can be a bit more firm about that. Um, what have we got this week? We're talking about Halloween Friday, aren't we? Yep. Next week, I think we're quite clear, or are we on to the next poll? Uh, I think, well, Halloween poll will be next poll, wouldn't it? Yeah, so, so that's, that's, yeah, no, yeah, so okay, maybe next Friday we'll do a dev blog on it and, uh, and talk more about what the plans are next Friday, I think. Seems quite reasonable to me. Yeah. Sounds good. Will the Divine be replaced on Corpse Drop Table? I, I was thinking no, but we can rebalance the numbers so the drop rates stay the same with the other three. Uh, John. Basically, uh, an input from John here, which mimics something that I was thinking anyway, is we're probably going to balance out the drop table to sort of sort the other three out uh, slightly, because obviously now there's only three spirituals, not four. We're not really going to replace it with anything for launch. Um, likely, we might look to replace something after launch if people feel there's a gap and uh, we either need something to p replace the divine. We can look at that, but for launch, we're not going to put anything in Divine's place. We'll launch with the three spirit shields. We'll sort out the drop table so they keep their rarity. If not, make it probably a little bit rare. We don't know yet. And um, go with that. If there's anything you want after that, we're more than happy to implement something 
such as a weapon or a new shield mm. or you know even a, put the pet on there put two pets have a court pet and a core pet we don't know okay. but we can go with that if we need to Luke 97 asks ETA on Iron Man mode um, don't know yet soon <laughs> Same for your bub bub dum reaction last week. <laughs> yeah, uh, weeks rather than months. So uh, yeah, not too long. Ash is still developing it, and he is quite a good way through it at the moment. Yes, so. yeah, yeah, no, pro progress is going really well. RSN Lender asks: Will you ever consider the possibility of players changing the name of their pet for a certain amount of coins? I'd like the ability to make that possible. At the moment, we can't do that. Um, I would definitely like that. I think I brought it up the other day that we can't actually change the name of a configs or the, the nice name of a configs, the name you see uh, in script um, nicely anyway. So uh, I'd like that ability from engine, and which would allow us to do things like the baby troll pet, which um, obviously you feel an item to and it changes its name. I'd like to, to do something like that. So people could name their pets whatever they wanted to, as long as it was clean, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I'd like that. Bear in mind that a lot of their jobs are really small for engine, um, so if you shove them all into like a Jira thing, we tend to obviously just suddenly find time and then do them all in one go. Mm. What are you doing? I, <laughs> well, I, don't even see. I mean, it tends to be the case that when enough of these things stack up, then suddenly they all get done in one go, mm. which means it's hard to give the community an estimate, but yeah. we do get them done. Mm -hmm. It's not like adding another small job is really going to slow anything down, so. It's not really a problem. Yeah, we've got a whole load of other tasks as well we got together and uh, decided on the off-site as well, so uh, they'll all be coming your way very <laughs> shortly. Don't worry. If that were to be the case, how would you see the name of the pet? Because right now, there's no options on them at all for other players. Uh, that's something we'd have to work around. Again, that's being done inside the engine, but that's only being done because we get given a special code that we then put on the pets to say this is what it should do. Mm -hmm. Again, that wouldn't be, I imagine, too difficult for them to sort, sort out. But... Um, if you're, do you want to see the name of somebody else's pet, or is it only matter to you? I guess that's one of the important questions as well. So, yeah, now everyone's still asking where Ash is. So you know, these are people who didn't uh, weren't watching from the start. The needles. So uh, <laughs> Ash is 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 not very well, unfortunately. He's, he's turned he's, into uh, a mug. He's turned into a, um, a mug. Um, but before that, he was coughing an awful lot and sneezing. And although you know, we did decide as a team that would be hilarious to have him on stream sitting in the corner sneezing as he does, uh, it probably would break most of your headphones. Yeah, so, um, actually, yeah. sneezing is rather incredible. Yeah, it is. It is. It <laughs> is. It can be heard across the entire space. Yes. I, I, got, uh, <laughs> I got a mess, so many messages today saying, How could you sit next to that? And why are you not ill as well? Yeah, but, I, but um, I was sitting in a meeting room and uh, near, near where we sit. I was chatting with, I can't remember who it was, I was chatting with somebody. And suddenly this big roar erupted from uh, from outside the <laughs> meeting room, and uh, I, I knew it was Ash, so I ignored it. And the guy in there looked shocked. I was like, what, "What was that?" I was like, "Oh, that's just Ash sneezing. It's fine." <laughs> John and I printed off scorecards to hold up to so like ten, <laughs> eight, it's fair, depending on how good Ash sneezes. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, and Ronan gets his uh, daily zero, but because um, I'm the Meg of the old school team. You are the, <laughs> shut up, Meg. As you, as you <laughs> me. So yeah, so hopefully uh, Ash will be back next week. Don't worry. While we're off topic, I can't help but notice that we have an amazing new live streaming setup behind the scenes, and all of it is simply showing default desktop backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> so that seems like a really good investment to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Simon's got his hands in his head. <laughs> if you're listening, Mr. Boss Man, really good job they've done. <laughs> Yeah. No, we're just old, old school can do a lot with a small amount of processing power. <laughs> right, carry on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nonviolence asks, will you repoll the nerf divine? We're unsure what we're doing with divine at the moment. I think if we went and repolled it, we'd get a lot of slack for saying, mm. but you're trying to force divine on us. We don't want divine. It failed a poll. There were two questions for divine, and both of them failed quite miserably. So for the time being, I think we're likely to drop divine. If it comes up after launch and everyone's now shouting, we want Divine, and there's a significant amount of interest in it, we can look to do it again. But for the time being, I think we're going to put Divine on the back burner and focus on the corp that we've got at the moment, the shields we've got at the moment, and any additional weapons armors that people ask us for. We're going to leave Divine alone for the time being. Um, we don't want to be seen to be pushing content on people by repolling things that have failed. So uh, mm. with Divine's current failure, we are going to leave it alone. Yeah. Louis Rocks 97 asks, is there any content from pre EOC that you would absolutely say no to creating? <laughs> Karasi. <laughs> That's, that would be mine. Corp. Corp? Oh, it's a bit late. <laughs> bit of a shame there, isn't it? A bit like that. Uh, 
I don't think there's anything at um, all, really. I think I would be completely against Karasi purely because it did take it to the whole next level. Guaranteed. Beyond damage. Dragon Claws, <laughs> in my opinion. Like, to have a spec weapon that... Well, well, actually, you could argue VLS, but I'd stick with Karasi because that was just deadly. Dungeoneering. Really? You'd say Dungeoneering? Because John will have to test it. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's his reason. So jo John's yeah. reason for not adding it is the work. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a big project. It, I, I don't disagree with you. Imagine how big it would be for us to make it. So we'd yeah, love to. do it in an evening. Yeah, to be fair. Anyway, that would be mine. Uh, Cams asks, what is the correct best kill count for Barrows? He was asking on the forums the other day, so he's heard J-Mod say a few different numbers. I Oh, so the best kill count to get at Barrows? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the numbers are always up in the air. I think Chris Sell did sit down at one point and say, I think 11. I think 11, 11 or 13, those two numbers ring a bell, uh, is the best. See, I heard 14. I've really? Heard 14 I think you told lot. me 14. Yeah, yeah. I, you said 14. Did I 14? Right. No, no, 14? No, yeah. Now, I think what happened was there's there were uh, I'm going to go against completely wrong. Um, Eleven gets you the best chance of good stuff from the chest, but fourteen gets you the most optimal um, rooms from it yeah. as yes. well. But your I think count doesn't affect so your chance at no. The chest. So hmm. in order to get a Barrow's piece, you have to kill that Barrow's brother. If you don't kill Carils, for example, and you kill all the others, you won't get anything from Carils. You have to kill that Barrow's brother. So the more Barrows Brothers you kill, the more likely the chance of you getting a Barrows piece is obviously increased. The kill count doesn't affect how what Barrows piece you get or what the chance of a Barrows piece you get is. That only affects the amount of and what runes you get <coughs> and bolt racks as well. So I think, I think if I remember rightly, because the RS3 version is slightly different to our version. So when Chris did the maths, I think he was doing it for the RS3 build pre his Rise of the Six update. So I think it is. It's between eleven and fourteen for sure. I mean, you don't. I so, can't, so the I answer can't is the exact we number. can't give you the answer. I, I'll, come, I'll go know. and tweet the number afterwards. The most thing to do is just not go to barrows at all. Just go room craft. <laughs> <laughs> or that, but um, yeah, buy your barrow stuff. Getting you know two hundred kill count or getting six doesn't change. You know, affect your chance of getting barrows. So long as you kill the brother, your chances obviously increase. And the more brothers you kill, the more chance you have. If you don't kill that brother, you won't get their pieces. So all the people. So if up and you only kill one brother. of the brothers. That means you're only likely to get something from that brother. Yes. Mm. So you've got more chance of getting something from that brother? No. No, no not really. It's a, an oh, it's a stacking one. Okay. Really the, ba the Barrow's code is very old and uh, very, very awkward. But, yeah, that's uh, a polite way to put it. Yeah. Probably needs rewriting. <laughs> 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 oh, no, not really. There we go. Ijack I asks, will there ever be a Grandmaster quest similar to Wild Gothic Sleeps in terms of storyline? I'd certainly like there to be. I had concepted an Uber quest tier, which was the be all and end all quest. A quest that took you maybe 40 hours to do. Much like if you obviously bought a new console game, you're doing the story mode, you don't finish it in an hour and think, oh, that game's done now, I'll put it aside. You usually have to come back the next day. It also doesn't so involve just having to walk back and forth. Yes, so <laughs> it's not like the traditional old school quest which says, hey, I have this note, take it to this NPC over here. Okay, I've received this note. Okay, thank you, take it back. You know, going backwards and forwards. Or waiting for a tree to grow for 12 hours. Sort of a really Wild Gothic Sleep slash Rich of the Marjor Art style really immersive quest. And I would like something like that. I think we've put it to the priority polls, I think, twice now. We've done two of them, haven't we? Or have we done three? Two. Three. three. Two. Yeah, we've done three, I think. Oh, we've, three. we've only put quests in it twice. It's not come up... It's not been sort of your most desirable piece of content in comparison to everything else, but um, I would like to do one. I would like to write a quest. Ash has written a load of historic quests, and I think it's something I'd like to add to my, uh, my collection of delivered content. Created for Dota 2 asks, do you plan on doing any reworks for any content that has not passed polls? I guess it would depend on how much it failed the poll by and what content we were offering. Mm. There's not very many pieces of content out there really that have failed by you know 0.6%, 1%, yeah. 2% that we haven't looked at and already repolled or uh, obviously as obviously introduced as it's passed. But um, I don't think I mean we, anything that gets like 74.6% or something we look at and we think what was what made that 0.4% not vote in favour? What could we change about it that the majority or the other remainder people would want? to be happy with it and we'll offer it again because there's no point in us discarding that piece of content when mm. clearly the majority of the community want it. Uh, if it gets like 68% and it's not, it doesn't hit that boundary of super majority and I don't think that 68% would be too annoyed if, it didn't, if they didn't get hold of it. So mm. um, we will 
look at repolling things that get very, very close and see I, what we can do. I posted on Reddit the other day, um, me and Matt were talking about the possibility mm. of doing a near miss poll. So a bunch of stuff that came really close to passing and maybe it has issues that we can address and it was really consistent feedback <laughs> so we know what was wrong with it. Um, or stuff that came within like 0.1% yeah, for a very long reason. Just, you know, the community's opinions ought to change, so, you know. Like the well. trimmed quest cape is one that comes up quite yes, a lot. Yes, exactly. Yeah. There's a reason I'm, I'm sitting horizontal. It's because this sofa is designed to look good for you. <laughs> I think you'll find that it's extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> so I'm doing quite a good job, you know, it's with a reasonable a pose nice sofa, here. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> James, Simon, well, uh, you need one of these sofas. Nothing to do with it. The uh, red sofa is just a... Just like point that out now. Is that the, that's not the broken one, is it? The one where you no. set at one end, you're like considerably taller than the, the person <laughs> at the other end. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. RS Gores asks, can you implement a button on the bank <coughs> menu to switch between the bank and your equipment screen? That would be nice. I'd like that. I think we definitely can. That's no problem. It's just an inventory that, oh, not inventory, sorry, an interface that we can link at the same time. It will be mm. a there will be a slight uh, rework to the bank for that, but it is possible. I would definitely like it. Yeah. James James one nine nine four zero asks, can we be able to charge a ring of wealth eye to <coughs> teleport to miscellanea, etc.? What was the reason we didn't do that in the first place? Because it was like six other items. Uh, that's the only reason, I think. Um, mm. I see a reason not to be able to get there easily. No, there's. I mean, it's definitely possible. It's not that it's impossible and we're going to struggle to do it. It's not. It's a trivial job, really. It's, well, it's not so just, just that it was a lot of script for a whole lot of benefit yeah. to review it and you're going to lose it. Yeah, I think um, we'll, we'll come back to that one and we'll revise that one amongst ourselves because there's nothing to stop us from doing it by any means. So uh, we'll have to look at that. I'll talk to Ash because Ash is the one that made it. And I see Matt's trying not to laugh. <laughs> I see that lone tear going, <laughs> don't, don't roll down my face. <laughs> <laughs> they, love, they love you, James. <laughs> <laughs> Darko 2004 asks, are we ever going to get the Varak, uh, the Varok, can't speak, Varok Fountain Jagex Reach created? Do you want it? Do you really want it? Does everyone want the original Varok Fountain? <laughs> That's the one that you can't walk through, by the way. I'm going to have to remove the fold in my trousers, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> jo John's now given up. Oh, they, they, you do realise that they're going to do that now every <laughs> single time. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Simon's, Simon's collapsed, James has collapsed, and John is okay. coughing up a lung. <laughs> so, uh, and the chat loves it. Uh, Matt's trying his best to, to not laugh, yeah. so we're doing quite well. <laughs> Ronan just doesn't think it's funny. No, Ronan. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at that. Yeah. Past yeah. menopause. Yeah. Yeah, Rock Fountain. Rock Fountain, yes. <laughs> so the Rock Fountain, the original fountain was the one you couldn't walk through. It was a circular fountain with a statue in the middle and some uh, some nice sort of plinths around the around the outside. Mm. So uh, I do have it. in it as Jane Mods. You said the only place you could stand there and hide in the middle oh, of the... Uh, annoyingly, there's a weird entry thing on the... Uh, the the current fountain that we can't teleport into. There yeah. is nowhere we can teleport into it. There's some it's blocking. Check, uh, well, they said move you off the right way just yeah. someone logged out. It's, it's, I've noticed that a few times when I wanted to play around and be a boat in the middle. So, oh, so somewhere not even James can go. Yeah, we can, we can just move the restriction, but um, if you want the original map editor, uh, not map editor, sorry, the fountain, which uh, you'll probably completely forgot about by now at least, uh, you can have it. Danny Gamba asks, will there be a teleport to Corp? I think he was suggesting a 200 quest point requirement as well. The problem we had with the quest point requirement was it didn't really make much sense. Yeah. It, it was, I, I want to use this jewelry, I want to rub it. Oh wait, no, I can't because apparently I don't have 200 quest points. It just didn't really make any sense. Same with entering the cave. Mm. There is no plan to teleport to the corp. Yeah, At the moment be you are going to have to. It'd impact PvP quite a bit of corp teleport, I think. Yeah. Um, I'll be careful of. And I think the corp cave is just beyond level 20 wilderness, so you couldn't, well... Originally, there was a bounty hunter cave that there wasn't there. That yeah, there was. Mm -hmm. There was obviously the bounty hunter, which was a safe area. So, you, mm -hmm. and then obviously the wilderness was still a safe area, but you did have revenants. I think it's worth offering one. I'd like to offer one, but I'd like to have it imbued with inside the cave. So you still have to make the initial run. Yeah. I, like, I think that run adds the risk to the the corp mm -hmm. factor, and PKs are going to be quite happy with camping out trying to trap anybody in bandos. Um, mm -hmm. We can look at it again. There isn't going to be one 
well, there isn't one at the moment, at the very least. If we decide to do one before launch, then we'll be talking to you about it. But right now, there isn't one that I haven't got a plan for one. So, we'll see. Zoshi1 asks, To give the Ring of the Gods some more use, could it be possible to assign it to a certain god by using a completed god book on it? Doing this would count the ring as an item aligned to that god's faction in God Wars Dungeon. Yes. I like that. Yep, we can do that. Brogan RS asks, are there any plans at the minute for higher prayer content, high level prayer content? If so, what are they? Necromancy. Yeah, necromancy is pretty, pretty much what's going through my mind. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, this whole mechanic of killing a monster, raising bones out of the ground to turn it into a uh, skeletal type thing is, is really quite cool. And uh, that will work quite nicely with a, uh, with a uh, high level, John's chair has just collapsed, um, with a <laughs> high, high level uh, prayer update um obviously you know we, we we're not working on it at the moment because uh, it's something you guys haven't said is important to us but uh, if it's something that catches your imagination you have ideas do let us know and we can certainly bump it up the list if you think it's important enough absolutely pentalix asks how big is the continent and how many to how many towns will there be uh towns i could not give you uh, an estimate because i might delete some as i even though I've, even after i've made them i might put some more in Absolutely no clue. We can go with, imagine Taverly or White Wolf Mountain all the way over to Castle Wars. Everything in between is, is how big it's going to be on scale. Um, imagine just have a look at our map and see how many towns are in between that and imagine it to be something similar. Um, our current graphics artist is actually making a ZBrush map of the continent at the moment and it looks really, really good. Mm. And the moment that's ready to show you, I shall definitely show you. Generally, the towns are quite small in the current map as well, so we might have them slightly larger. Yes, they are going to be in... You can go to, as an example, go to Varrock and find any house. It is a house. It's got a bed in it, a sink in it, and uh, some stairs and a front door. But uh, the three tiles widened by five tiles long is not really... doesn't really give you the impression it's a house. And you walk in there, and the bed is obviously next to the kitchen, which is next to the door. It's not a house. So I'm going to scale things up a bit, uh, a bit slightly to make it look like a proper town. This is a proper town house. This is a proper town bank. This is a proper town mm. building, uh, just to give it that sort of real authentic feel. So everything's going to be slightly bigger. There might be less in it, but it's bigger. It's Would you still be able to walk into strangers' houses and search their drawers? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't see why not. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think any anyway, no NPC has previously complained about you going through their drawers and taking shields and coins out of it. So <laughs> why not? Why not? What's seats. mine is yours, really. <laughs> 44123 asks, Dark short bow, 80 plus range accuracy, shoots one arrow. The spec is the same as the Debo, but half of the damage, new Debo sync. No. Uh, I looked at John for that, but John just gave me a straight up no. Um, it's just too confusing. <laughs> the Dark bow is a very, very unique script. It's got, and it's, <laughs> it's got its own folder inside the combat folder <laughs> for how absolutely mental that, that yeah, weapon that is. It would be a very useful bow either. I mean, uh, it's not just what a dark bow is, we come up with something for that. Mm. But that's not really the way to go. Right? Yeah, um, mimicking what John said, it sounds like you want a dark bow sync, more importantly, probably an item sync, and we have better ways of doing that than taking weapons and making short bow versions of them when, if it's slightly faster, does half the damage, I'd still probably opt for using the standard dark bow so if you can hit two arrows, yeah. you trade the speed for the damage. Especially when Darkbow can hit, what is it, a 90? 96, I think. 96, mm. so. But if you're going to max a 96 with a Darkbow in your half, that's 48. That's pretty much, that's barely more than a made shortbow spec. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. you might as well stick with a standard Darkbow. Bryce Roars asks, have you guys made any mistakes with the rotten potato, kind of like how Ronan teleported sick nerd into the wilderness with Bank? Um, I, used to, I used to press the... Uh, AME all, uh, AME all button when uh, I was surrounded by players and I used to sort of send you know, 400 uh, random events and whisk off everybody standing around me. I've put a few hacky scripts on there just for the lols and I think I used it by accident on World 1 once <laughs> and what it did was it searched for everyone around everyone around me by like a 10 minute. I think we got to start this conversation off properly about you know the conversation we had before, okay, okay, before so it happened. I, I made that I script, there's basically this is the script hunted for everybody around me, it said you know find everybody around you, get them in focus, and make them do something. What it did is it made them point and face me and say, you know, hail God or whoever. Um, and they all said it at once above their heads and bowed. And I was about to do it on World 1, because why not? So this went through a planning phase and everything? This no, 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 I just, I, yes. I think <laughs> Ash, and I, Ash and I were just experimenting with something. I don't think Ash was even experimenting, I think it was just me. 
And uh, I said, I'm going to do it on World 1. The idea. And uh, I think you said, no, don't do that. Something might break. At which point Ash said, no, it should be fine. So I took the, uh, I took the advice of, at the time, my mentor, which was Ash. Yeah. I thought, Ash says it's fine. Everything's going to be OK. I clicked it, clicked it, and it disconnected World 1. Yeah, I did that. Uh, and then, like, two or three days later, John did it. So um, <laughs> at that point, I thought, I probably should remove this. Uh, he wasn't mad, but I remember, I remember doing it going, oh. Then I looked to my side and I just saw Phil go. <laughs> <laughs> my response was, yeah, you saw that. <laughs> so he brought the world back up and everything was fine. And I removed the script. No, I didn't. Actually, John did it. And then Phil then got mad. And then I removed the script. Yes. So we, we, never, we never done anything bad with the potato. Uh, at least except, we except for knock off the least. busiest world that we've got. Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> haven't done anything bad with the potato. but Just you, <laughs> yeah. No, we as a team <laughs> haven't done anything bad with it, but... Um, I killed Alfie and worked his bank. Yeah, purpose. the kill option's still <laughs> there, the bank, why bank option mm. isn't, but... Um, I, I know the rotten potato's been used for some bad things by some people, of course. Yeah, it has, so I we've... I can't uh, imagine what that might be. We've decided to rain it's it gone bit. very silent, hasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can I hint at something bad? I think we get rid of PvP ones anyway, should so it's talk, fine. talk about corp now? Yeah, so... <laughs> Okay, moving on. Wizzy Hat G asks, why is the room pouch untradeable? Technical reasons. Yeah, technical reasons. Because the data inside the pouch is stored on the player and not the item, making it tradable will be slightly problematic. All the data, that's, everything that's inside your pouch is stored on you, not the item. So we can't have the item being tradable because that data can't be transferred between players and it's slightly problematic, so we I don't do it. I did see one person requesting two different versions of it, so one would be the untradable when you've got runes in it. and That would be okay. I mean, it was only in the last year that uh, the RS3 engine got the support to have variables on items themselves, which would make it possible. Um, it's not the largest change, but it's not trivial. So, I mean, it's something that's possible, but we would need to prioritize it. If there were enough different items, enough, enough different use cases for being able to trade um, more flexible items in game, then it's, it's a possibility. But just for the sake of the pouch, it's not really worth it. I think it was done partly out of the combat rework. It was. It was known as the Fear Update. Oh, yes. <laughs> the, the legendary Fear Updates. The updates that spread fear into most developers because it's quite a dangerous change. But uh, it went through and there was no problem, so all, well, all is well and good. How many known children does it take to kill a corporal beast? I'm still finding out. If I go upstairs, at the moment the counter was <laughs> on 1,063. Um, and the corp had just under half HP, so obviously that's counting the amount of gnome children that have died in their attempt to kill corp. So after this stream, I shall tweet how many gnome children it's taken so far to kill the corp, if it hasn't killed it, and obviously the amount it takes to kill it if they have. So we'll find out soon. It might, uh, you suggested putting out a time lapse. That'd be quite nice on a time lapse. I think it would. Although sending lots of children to their death, I, I, I worry about. <laughs> it's a, it's a gnome They're child. just gnomes. Yeah, forget <laughs> about it. You know, people kill gnomes all the time anyway. I saw that player go, oh, gnome child, thank you, and then got 99 an attack on it. That's <laughs> 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 not the same sort of thing in RuneScape. No. Yes. Why didn't you poll Elysian separately like you did the Divine? Elysian didn't really have the same impact that Divine did. The Divine was particularly powerful, whereas Elysian we can kind of get away with. The spirit shields aren't as bad as people make out, I think. That's one thing we would want, did want to stress, and I did want to try and demonstrate that through testing the shields and probably getting some known PBMers in to test the shields with a nerf, without a nerf, to show the difference. So we can get away with the Elysian, it doesn't really make much of a difference. The Divine does, so we put hold that one separately, because all the concerns that we had around Corp were coming from the Divine, Nobody was saying, oh my god, Spectral was overpowered, we need to change it, Elysian, that was ridiculous, Arcane, what are you thinking? So um, it was all Divine, so we pulled Divine separately just to sort of get your opinions on that shield, because the others were pretty much home and dry. So, Well, they were until we pulled them at least, and uh, it was the most tense poll I think we've seen. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> mm. For, what, maybe 48 hours, it was within 50 votes either way, yeah. constantly going either way. Uh, ended up about 300 I, about think, 300. I think 307 it, yeah. it, it finished above, which is quite, which is quite tense. I remember waking up yeah. in the morning, I literally woke up, went on my phone and went, where's Ronan's website? <laughs> 307. Ooh, by the time I go to work, that's still going to be the same case. By the time we close the poll, hopefully that'll still be the same case. So, Yeah, it was a close one. A couple of questions about the Saruman's tier, which is, think, I think it's passing. Uh, it yeah, was when I saw it. 76 point. 
two when I was last looked. That's lower than what I saw, but. Uh, so one question is, what will it drop on death if another player kills someone using it? And the other question is, how will the accuracy on it work? So will melee armor make it more accurate? I'm looking at John. You don't want to know what just happened to me. Uh, and John's shaking his head at me because he's doing something else. <laughs> um, uh, the truthful answer to that is I don't know right now. I imagine it will drop coins because it's an untradeable and we have that at the moment doing something similar. Am I wrong? I don't know what the uh, what, what the Sarah Diamond's tier is supposed to do. John, what's the Sarah Diamond's spear supposed to do on tier, supposed to do on death? Um, I think we were talking about it uh, lo losing both on death. But if we do that, the PK doesn't get anything. That's true. I was thinking about doing something similar to the Ring of Wealth Eye, where if you you have to pay coins to attach it to the sword, and then those coins are dropped on death. Yeah, we see how powerful it is actually. Mm. It's got to be worth doing as well. Yeah. So it's clearly yeah. decided, but we'll, we'll find a way where uh, the, the sword is still sunk, and, uh, but if you kill someone with it, you get something worth getting as well. Yeah. We'll look at that one in the coming days, if it passes at least. If it doesn't pass, then we don't have to worry about it. But. Yeah. And in terms of whether or not armor will impact accuracy, um, as in negative magic bonus, that is. Again, we'll have to look at that one. Okay. PVM Virus asks, repoll slash bug fix the log timer while in combat, please. The six hour methods are stupid. Um, they're actually broken right now, I believe. So we're going to have to look at just fixing that outside of a poll anyway. So we know that the six hour logout isn't functioning the way it should do. Ash uh, has already tried looking into it once because he's the one that works on it and hasn't really found the time right now, especially with Iron Man on his uh, shoulders. Mm. So I think with some free time now, I might have a look at it and see what it is that's causing the problem and fix that because it isn't working as intended. Green Door 1 asks... Does he? <laughs> it just started really odd. I think I missed a letter. Now that you've received the tools to start working on full screen slash resizable mode, can you see a release time this year? If not, when? The tools haven't fully been delivered to us just mm. yet. This man <coughs> over here can tell you more. Well, I have uh, finished the tools. Um, I left them in the hands of Mod Philip because I went and worked on something else. Uh, they simply need to be given over to the old school content team to actually launch them into a test world. There's just a bit of a process to essentially publish the tools to that world. It's fairly straightforward. Um, the only reason I didn't do it last week was because I, I believe you were busy doing some release. Yeah, we had Bounty thing? Hunter to go. Bounty Hunter yeah. release. So yeah, within the next few days, it will actually be handed over. So I would say that you should expect to hear a release date soon. But yeah. until I've handed them over, we won't have them in the roadmap. If we can get the, if we've got everything we need uh, by the end of middle of October, so what's that, about 10th, 15th or so, about then it's weeks. quite conceivable we'd have it this year. Um, yeah, in terms of engine support, it is, it is done. Modulo one or two back and forth conversations mm. I'll have with the uh, content guys. Yeah. So, we're happy about it, it's just a matter of slotting it into mm. the schedule. And the problem, so I suppose, appears if there's work in there from the content point of view that we don't know he's doing. Um, but we don't know that until we've got the tools, had a proper look at it, and then we can be a bit more accurate on what we're doing from there. Hopefully it'll be five minutes' work and we can just go, there you go, you can have it. That'd be, that'd be wonderful from our point of view. But <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah, it, it would be nice, but we can't see that happening. But uh, it all depends on the, the sheer volume of content work that needs to be done once we've got the tools. So hopefully this year, fingers crossed, but can't guarantee anything, of course. Too Fat asks, instead of having a teleport to target, can we instead have the arrow back and slash or make it so the tar uh, teleport to target spell teleports you randomly within X squares of your target? Easily. Uh, the hint arrow, we're going to do something with to increase its range. At the moment, the, it's operating at its max range. There's not really much we can do beyond that besides a few hacky things that Clamors is doing to point in the general direction, but not exactly where your target is. That's not possible at the moment. I'd like that possibility, but outside of engine support, that's just not going to happen from our side. The, it's possible to teleport you within range of your target. That's easily doable. We don't have to teleport you straight to it. We can teleport you a map score away, and uh, you have to find it from there easily. It sort of defeats the object of the teleport to the target. It yeah. does, but depending on how overpowered people think that might feel, we can easily deliver you to positions near your target instead of being directly on, next to, or around your target. Interjection asks, has a combat rebalance ever been considered where all weapons would, all weapons stats change to achieve similar DPS? 
Well, that'd be boring, wouldn't it? Uh, Why no. Are all weapons to do the same thing. <laughs> they obviously, they obviously tear themselves upwards because they're designed to be different. I mean, that's the whole point of having level progression. <laughs> but um, we haven't had that discussion because we haven't felt the need to address our combat because I think people mm. generally like our combat system. And until they come to us, we're screaming, we need our combat to be different. We're mm. not going to touch combat. Yeah. So. Oh, it's nice to have some things that are better than others as well. Otherwise, there's nothing to aspire for, to. You know, if your, uh, I don't know, rune swords are exactly the same as your dragon claws, then uh, I'll be like, I must have a rune sword, you know. I'm not talking about, like, rune and dragon. Yeah, well, you know, a dragon, like dragon, dragon, dragon uh, semi the same as dragon claws. There you go. You know, it sort of doesn't make it as exciting and interesting. So, no, but we have things to be different. We have absolutely no intention at all of addressing our combat situation, mm. and I don't think, as the chat is suggesting, you have any intention of telling us that we yeah. need to. So yeah. we can leave combat alone. Yeah. Except for make more combat ways of combating yeah. stuff. Yeah. Besides, besides creating <laughs> more combat uh, yes. scenarios at the very yes. least. Yes. And the last question I got is from Blue Hawk OSRS. Is it possible to solo corp on old school? No. Right now, John, I think, holds the record for 1,164 164 damage out of 2,000 hit points. So that's only just over halfway. <laughs> We've and not come... You did still have two brews left. You had two brews left. So you probably, you probably could have got to about 1.3 of them, really. How did you die, then? I got combat. Oh, okay. I'm not going to say it's impossible, because someone will find a way. It's undoubtable yeah. that will happen. I know Magic. some people... <laughs> Some people were just out. Some people out there are beyond our level of ability yeah. in PBM. Yeah, Wooks Wooks will do it. Wooks <laughs> has demonstrated time and time again. Yeah. He will always find a way of doing something like that. As the chat is now screaming at us. Yeah. I have spoken to Wooks about Corp. I believe I might be about Corp or something else. Um, but um, we shall monitor how it goes on launch. But none of us have started it yet, and I don't think we're ever going to manage it. Mm. Which is why I'm petting gnome children against it to see how many it takes. Yeah. Um, I just got a message typed to me. Am I, are we talking about this? No. Are we talking no, about I don't, I don't see it? What it said, said leaderboard at RF. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, okay. we can do that. Yeah, no, one of the things we're looking at RuneFest of doing is uh, anybody who's there will get a chance to solo corp and uh, there'll be a uh, uh, there'll be a leaderboard of who gets the most damage and uh, the winner's going to get a, a golden name for it. So that'll be quite a cool thing to do. We do have our own golden names this year. Yeah. Woo! I've got a name. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got a solo corp then get the most damage. <laughs> it's, it's an adult golden name though. Not not a no <laughs> child. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so if you want if you come to Broomfest and you want to win a golden gnome and you're good at PVM, sit down and try our solo yes. corp. Yeah. Put in some packs so if, uh, <coughs> so None so of the accounts <laughs> are J mods. Yeah. They're all player accounts. Yeah. Oh, by the way. It will be fun. It will be fun. So yeah. Cool. Achievement diaries I saw somebody mention. Um that is currently scheduled in for the very beginning of next year. Yes. There Which go. means we've got to go through. You think you sat down, or we all sat down actually, yeah. and decided that we want 10 achievement diaries, was it? Yeah. Yep. We'll be so 10 achievement a diaries. More which about that in uh, at RuneFest. Have obviously easy, medium, hard, and potentially elite. Mm. So that's quite a, quite a job. Yes. I believe it was me that's supposed to be doing that as well. Yes. Christ. Well, you, you do have two weeks from Ash as well. They're easy enough to plug in. Try they to are. See it, all those dependencies. They are. Every you single time. <laughs> it's your fault. You suggested them. Yeah. You came in and went, I want achievement diaries. It's like, okay, you can test them. Well, you're going to have to, but uh, <laughs> they're all yours. I might be off that month. <laughs> so will I. Actually, yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> you are. Actually, yeah, November. It's December. Yeah, I, I have certain games coming out that time. That, uh, so do I. Pokemon's coming out. That's take, my, uh, take my fancy. Take your life away. <laughs> they do take my life away, but then that's why I'm here. Yeah. It was the 11 11 <laughs> holiday. Yes, it is. Mm. The, I believe it's the 11th at least, anyway. Um, Australian worlds. No uh, more news on them. No moment. more news. No. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, nothing more I can say at the moment. That's only very sarcastic. It is genuinely unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> With John talking so much, why isn't he sitting down? It's a good but point, actually. Yeah, he's, he's sneezing in the corner there. He's the got only, a bit of a cold. The only so benefit is... Like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> the only, yeah, but you were laughing, not really choking. I think the only benefit is him sitting over there means we're not getting ill, mm. so... Uh, free yeah. <laughs> well, we are we are we are sealed in with that door. It is extremely hot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, free to play. A few people have mentioned, uh, so we'll cover that. Um, we're still collecting data on free to play. How that behaves at the moment. We've still got both trials running. So we've got the free to play trial. Um, obviously, that's what they are. The new members, uh, new free to play trial. So if you're a new account within the first two weeks, you get access to free to play servers. 
Uh, Iron Man will be available on free to play as well. So uh, when Iron Man awesome. comes out, you'll be able to have two weeks go on that, so everybody can have a go, which will be absolutely quite fantastic. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, so that'll be good. You can experience that. Um, and obviously we have the returning uh, members free to play as well. So if you haven't had membership for uh, 90 days, you get two weeks access to free to play servers as well. So that's all still ongoing. We're collecting information. When we've got more to talk about, we will do about what the next step is for on the uh, journey that is free to play. I okay. just saw somebody say, when are you going to substitute click to continue for the space bar? <laughs> we've already polled that and it actually failed. That might um, go on the near miss. Yeah, so I think it, it did might fail. Well do, yeah. By, I think what, what was the percentage it fell by? It was very no close. Yeah. I don't think people fully understood that question. Yes. So we can go back to that one. Yeah. But uh, if you want to be able to oh, space bar through chat or even hit one, two, three, four, five to go through options, yeah. then vote for it in the next poll if you want it. Otherwise, if you voted no to it last time and understood the question, vote no again. Dragon Claws, anybody want to talk about Dragon Claws? <sighs> uh, I remember seeing one streamer Roman promised these and then I came in the next day and said, did we have I this discussion? I did not promise them. <laughs> you, I think I quote saying is, you will see these on a poll in future and we'll offer them exactly how they were. I remember quoting. And then Ash and I came in the morning and we just sit down and said, was this a discussion that we were involved in or is this something that... I uh, thought that you were involved in it. I, mm -hmm. if I was, I was not aware that you were not. If I, if I was, <laughs> my response would have simply been the same as it's always been. But um, the problem with Dragon Claw Claws, as they were at the very least, is the game is rather roller balance right now. We have a very fair number of items in each category doing a specific unique thing that is no, 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 not much stronger than the next sort of category. Dragon, so basically our curve at the moment for progression for how strong items are is slowly doing this. With the introduction of Dragon Claws, we very, very quickly and exponentially grow oh, okay. our yes. strength. Um, and once we hit that roof with Dragon Claws, we can't really introduce anything better. We've already hit the top. So at that point, people will then be asking, well, now we've got Dragon Claws, it's already the best, you might as well give us Karasi. And true, we might as well give you Karasi because you know, there's nothing really better. Mm. You can say AGS spec, AGS is fine, because um, we have the Dark Boat to balance it out. AGS isn't guaranteed, it's also two specials. Much less accurate. Um, much, much, mm. much less accurate yeah. than Dragon Claws. I mean, you're much more likely to hit someone's max HP with Dragon Claws than you are ever an AGS. Same with uh, Debo. And magic is lacking ever so slightly, but then again, barrage is also very, very powerful. So, and the stun it has sort of makes up for it a little bit. But um, if we are to improve any sort of the combat triangle, it would be magic next. So I don't think we need dragon claws really. It's if we are to introduce them, we, they wouldn't be as they were originally. They would be a one special item, which is you know massively nerfed in terms of strength and accuracy. It's level 60 for a start as well, so the Abyssal Whip and the AGS, which are much higher, are completely undermined by this level 60 Dragon Weapon. It's just not feasible, really. So I, don't I reckon, I reckon, that in the next 12 months we will poll it. Yeah, potentially. I, I think we'll be in a position where we don't I, have a choice. I really don't think, personally, <coughs> we need something to be that powerful at level 60. Mm. It's not to say it will pass a poll. I don't no, think, I think I'm confident it probably would do if we polled it. I, th I think what would happen is uh, we'll get to a position where we'll need to poll it at some point in the next 12 months and it'll fail the poll. And that'll end the discussion there. That's what I think will happen. I don't know. I oh, we shall see. You know. Yeah, again, if, if you know, enough people really, really want that, then we can investigate <laughs> it. But as, as we're saying, the path of progression for our <laughs> combat items right now is very, very stable. We don't have any weapon being significantly stronger than the, another weapon from another category. Um, by introducing Dragon Claws, we boost melee incredibly, and there isn't really anything we can give range that uh, can match that, because then we start introducing one-hit items. And once we've got one-hit items at this point, two years down the line, when we've introduced a new awesome boss, what can we give that boss which is as good as Dragon Claws? We already hit the roof. There isn't anything we can do better. We can't progress is mm. my problem, which is why I don't like them. I remember having D-Claws, they were an awful lot of fun, and yes, going in and rushing people with one item is hilarious because you can take them out even when, even if they've got armor on with one item. And they were very helpful for bosses and Slayer and everything. But they are very, very strong, and for a level 60 weapon, that's it's completely imbalanced. It's not very healthy for the game. I feel like more than anything, people do just want variety as opposed to dragon yes, claws. We can achieve variety. We just I Sorry don't think tear, for example. Yes, true, exactly. We can we can achieve variety in a number of ways. We don't have to give you dragon claws as they were to do that. We can do that properly and we can approach it, you know, very slowly and look at the balance that we've got right now without putting one side way above the other. And I'd like to do it that way. <coughs> Armadil claws. Arm Armadil <laughs> claws. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we might as well do Karasi, a storm of Armadil and 
you know, death touch darts at that point, in my opinion, because <laughs> they're all pretty much one hit weapons at that stage. See, I like the idea of big, powerful weapons, but I also like, on one hand, you've got the weapon, but then you've got a defence against, specific defence against that weapon, so that if you go out there with these massive claws ready to scratch someone to pieces, you could have a, a defensive mechanism which, you know, stops them from hurting you and you can just deflect the damage back onto them. They should always have a drawback. I think AGS's drawback is it's very slow and it's not very accurate. So, yes, you could go to Wilderness and you could say, I'm going to AGS spec someone. I could possibly hit an 85, but at the same time, the accuracy of the weapon dictates that you're more likely to hit a zero. So, mm. um, you your not <laughs> Unless your opponent has <laughs> skill specs. So you, you, there is there is a drawback to that weapon. I think with Dragon Claws, there wasn't really a drawback here. It was a very quick, very powerful, very accurate level 60 weapon that most people could equip. You didn't even need a quest for it. So there wasn't a drawback to that. How and about make it hit you for half your health? Uh, yeah, I mean, so... Well, I, I guess we could... Given they're a rushing weapon? Yeah, I guess we could do something such as half of the damage you do to another player is drained from your mm -hmm. hit points. Yeah. You know, that would be a nice drawback because if you're low hit points, you don't particularly want to do that. So yeah. we'll have to see. I feel like every weapon should have a drawback. Auto-sculling thing auto on it, so when you attack somebody with it, you automatically skull. Yeah, that there's again, a chance that the damage is deflected back onto you. That'll that would be another would, uh, drawback. That mm. makes for some nice, uh, nice streams, wouldn't it? Would Dot. you automatically skull on someone if you're attacking them anyway? Well, not if they've attacked you first. True. Yeah, so so Dark Bow's drawback yeah. is actually, naturally, it's incredibly <laughs> slow. It's a very, very slow weapon. You wouldn't use Dark Bow for anything other than the special attack. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty rare going to hit a 96 as well. <laughs> and yeah, I haven't, I've never even seen a 96 come out of a well. Sarpo. I've seen 90s, but I've never seen a 96. Um, James is typing in the chat, actually. Make claws, ref make claws full hit damage reflect on Venge. I really like that idea. Yeah, so that's what we do with claws, at least. We'll have a look at claws potentially in the future, as much to my... I, swear, I don't like to see them, but mm. we'll have to have a look. That's just me personally. So yeah, all sorts of things we can do. All sorts of things. We're only sort of limited by uh, your imagination, really, I guess. And there's no limit to that. Unless you're obsessed with dragon claws. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Don't imagine there's too many people who are. Fixed DCs. Um, obviously, last few days we've noticed connection issues. They're being investigated at the moment. When we've got some news, we'll talk more. Um, yeah, that's it for that. We have an update coming out to both RS3 and Old School. Not sure when exactly mm. it's going in, but it's going to cause our global infrastructure to move its edge out. So it's going to protect against attacks by routing traffic from across the world to more local locations. So basically it's going to slash the uh, ability for attacks to actually work against us. You should see that reducing the vast majority of attacks we see against our servers. Um, we'll still have some work to actually you know, w make the details of that work out. Um, and theoretically, there are still attacks out there that could cause us problems, but that will certainly make any of the attacks that's happened to us so far this year not work. So we are definitely working on those issues, but um, you know, it takes time. Once we get there, we'll be very solid, though, mm. I'm sure. So for those who didn't understand anything about that, like me, uh, stuff's getting better. Yeah, it's just unfortunate because we as a team can't really do anything about it. We have to sit back mm. and just relay information as we get it to you and usually we give it to you as we get it. So mm. when you're on the forum shouting, oh my God, fix it, tell us why, and we hate, we have no idea, it's because we generally have no idea. Yeah. And when we know about it, we usually tell you because there's still people screaming, why is it happening, so. As, as much as I appreciate the frustration, it is quite irritating when I get tweets. If it, I'll tweet something, I'll get a response saying, why are you tweeting, go and fix the server? Yeah, I, I don't know how to fix the server. <laughs> the, ser the servers aren't a problem. I mean, the server yeah. is, is a hardware, is a hardware unit, imagine your PC, slightly bigger, slightly louder, there's nothing wrong with it. If it's lagging or your internet connection is quite poor, it's not your server, you know, not your server, your PC's fault. I'm not going to pick up a screwdriver, walk in, screw a few bolts together and be like, oh, it's done. You know, it's, it's a network issue. Um, the servers are absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just uh, <coughs> something which is affecting the network that the servers then use. It's just easy to blame a server. <laughs> Somebody asked a good question actually about splashing. Yeah. I mean, as a, as a team, we don't mind splashing. It's been there since day one, but I suppose there is something that we can do to uh, to stop people from having if it's an issue for you. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that could be, but effectively for those who don't know, which I'm sure you probably will do, uh, splash and you equip lots of really sort of low uh, magic uh, attack armour. Mm. and um, You equip as much melee armour as yes. you can, basically. And uh, then you're not doing any damage, so you can effectively just keep attacking this thing over and over again. Um, and I suppose there's stuff we can do, I don't know. Um, uh, make it so that the regular 
splashed monsters you can go and kill with a special device or something to stop people doing it if you don't like people doing it. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? The problem with... <laughs> Splashing is no really not really different to AFK or something like bandits, mm. in my opinion. I mean, I, I can see why people are frustrated by it. I, I don't, in any way, support splashing. Um, I do understand why people get frustrated with it. The problem with splashing is it's always existed. It's never existed as AFK as it is, which mm. is why we put things in like the six-hour logout to kick you out after a certain amount of time. And sort of random events did get in the way of that, but we have introduced something now which stops random events, so it is even more effective than it used to be. So I can see why people are frustrated by splashing. I, I get that. <coughs> the problem is we have so many areas of the game naturally before even Nightmare Zone, which it was possible. I think if we were to do something about splashing, we can't ban splashes. I mean, how do you prove? I mean, it's we ha we, that we can't ban splashes at least anyway. It's a job for the support team. Um, they would have to sort of monitor that and go in and make sure people are splashing and use all their standard uh, methods and proce uh, processes to sort of sort that out. If we did decide that's what we wanted to do, we'd go and do it and they'd sort mm -hmm. it out. But um, because of the amount of variables in the game, which AFKing is possible, it's very difficult for us to sort of combat that from a combat uh, from a content side. If we were, we'd probably have to change bandits, and that's historically been a very good training area. Mm. I got 99 combats at um, bandits back in like, 2006. I did. I only only reason I did it was so I had a higher a higher sort of attack strength and defense XP when I did 99 yeah, slayers. So, so so he could uh, do his exams. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the only reason he did it. Yeah, yeah, we know. But um, might be an interesting thing actually, James. Can you stick up a? Uh, a poll for us. Yes. Maybe uh, is splashing an issue? Yes, no. We'll and see if people really I care that much about it or it's not. It's very easy to say ban people because I think a lot of people just like the idea of another player being banned. We don't just ban people for splashing. They haven't broken a critical game rule. Mm. It's not like they've botted. It's not like they've reward traded or hijacked an account. They've decided to take advantage of a mechanic. It's not even bug abuse because it's a mechanic that we've left in game for years and we know about. We've talked about it. I think so saying ban people for it is very, very, very harsh or a very, very sort yeah. of weak offence. It's, it's even kind of like taking offense. a tank out to shoot an ant. Exactly. Yeah. It's overkill, effectively. Yeah. So we can, we can combat it better by limiting the amount people can splash. Um, again, mm. I'm wary of changing anything to do with splashing because of things like bandits. But again, mm. if people are that adamant that splashing needs to go, we can more than happily look into it. It will ruin Alfie's day because Alfie did uh, sort of... Mock himself as the chicken it? splasher yeah. of 14. So. Yeah. There we go. So there's a straw poll up now, sort of asking yeah. you if, you're, uh, <coughs> if uh, you have an issue with splashing or not. Um, let us know what you think. It'd be interesting think to see. One thing to keep in mind is that <coughs> splashing was always there. It was just mm. prior to the randoms change, it wasn't there on every world. Yeah. It was I've there on PvP worlds and a little more hidden. Before even old school, even in the RS3, before it was RS3, it's, I remember seeing people splash. I did some splashing. I was only doing it for magic XP. I was already 99 at that point because I just had bank standing something to do. Um, it's always been there. It's not. It's only really come to light in recent days because it's a cheap alternative mm. to the Nightmare Zone change that we made, which made Nightmare Zone expensive. So you know, it's not a new. Fa it's not a new mm. craze. It's always been around. It's just how we combat it is the problem. And I think running in saying splashing gone is not the way to go because it is an yeah. historic way of training and I don't think we're in the business of undermining things like that. Yeah, most people do it on spiders, don't they? Because I mean, the, the, the mice you can do, mice. Uh, you can kill the mice, can't you? You can't. So that's, that's that bit sorted out. So spiders, maybe, if they <laughs> splash poison every now and then, that would uh, stop them AFK in it. Um, as the, I mean, people were splashing in PvP worlds. I'm going to the straw poll very, very quickly. Because yeah. people in PvP worlds decided to be cocky and say, oh, look, I'm going to do it in a DFS while scold. Some people, and I've witnessed this, came along with a cat, killed the rat, then killed the player and took the DFS. So when there were drawbacks to it. <laughs> Obviously, we PvP worlds are very unpopular these days because of Bounty Hunter. Uh, and there's no random events, so you can do it in the normal game world. Yeah. There are, so you can't really affect the other yeah. player besides killing their rat, but they can do it on another NPC. Going to the straw poll is what 1,000 at the time of speaking 1,184 votes and what was that 68% yep. yeah. is I don't mind it which is 800 votes and it's obviously just under 400 votes for I want it removed. Yeah. Again, that could all be everybody that's splashing, but um, <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, we'll yeah, they're watching this and splashing game right now. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> so I don't I, think it's that big of an issue, really, is it? I, looking at that. We'll have to look. I'm, yeah. I'm okay with it purely because we've got other areas in the game where it's possible and it's always been around. So it's not a new fad. It has existed forever. It's only really come to light because of things like Nightmare Zone where we removed that ability because it was free originally. Um, if, we made, if we made it cost more, would people be okay with it? But then um, we'll have to have a look at that. 
<coughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's actually six. I didn't realize the time. I was looking at questions. Oh, well, look at that, yeah. Okay. I'm seeing a lot of people say splashing and mod jack mod. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I suppose we'll probably all say goodnight, haven't we? Um, uh, yes. We haven't anything to plug, do we? No, the we've got, we got the poll. Yes, yes, we've got the poll up with lots of new bounty hunter stuff. What else have we got in the bounty poll? It's just bounty hunter stuff. It's it? just bounty hunter. BH, yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> Dev vlog tomorrow. tomorrow about Halloween. Yay. Um, that's about it, I think. Awesome. Yeah. So, so I guess uh, we'll see you next week. Lovely. Uh, follow the RS channel for more OSRS live streams, types, Simon. Yes, follow <laughs> this channel. And you're going to live stream next week, aren't you? The yes. Man, yes. I, I don't know much about it, actually. All I know is next week I'm going to live stream talk about Iron Man with, I think it's Mod Pips and Dean, it might be. I can't more remember. More likely. Chavis. I remember, I remember seeing Ryan, that's it. Yeah, and Ryan. So we're going to talk about Iron Man. Um, the whole plan with Iron Man is we're doing a joint release, both Old School and RS3 will be doing it at the same time. So we're quite excited about that. Um, I was... Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a BTS about it as well because somebody came up with a camera, put it in my face, and asked me questions. So uh, I guess that's <laughs> going to be you, so I do. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's all be quite exciting. Some more news about Bounty, not Bounty Hunter, our oh, man coming yes. up soon. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see you later, I guess. Bye bye. Bye.